Well, folks, here is yet another thrift find computer, but this one is not a piece of junk, at least not totally, unless, of course, it doesn't work at all, in which case then it is, but, uh, this is a Dell Optiplex 790. Now, I thought that the 790 came in a BTX form factor, but this is very clearly not a BTX form factor. Maybe it was like the early generation clamshell, or sorry, the, the late, very late generation clamshell and early generation uh, DTX systems in that there was some overlap between the two. I'm not 100% sure on that. It does have the printer supply, and it's got P, uh, the VGA and 2PS2 that I'll need to actually really make use of this, because my plan actually, assuming that it, this works, is that this is going to go and over to the other place and replace my print server. But it's intact otherwise. I have an Optiplex 7010 already, which is in this same case. That would be a much better machine, but the 7010 has got an i7 in it, and I really don't need an i7. The system that's over there right now, I think is an a Phenom something? It's like a Phenom X4 9550 or something. And I don't even really think that I need that. And that system runs a little bit hot. Particularly with the power supply. So. But anyway, this thing's not totally complete. I've been thieved of the hard drive. I know that already. I've also been thieved of the RAM. I believe that this would take DDR3. But I guess I'm going to find out. And I should be able to just swap the drive between the two systems. Because it is Linux. After all, it's just running Ubuntu. I'll have to clean the dirt out of it. Which means I'll have to get the air compressor running. And I'm also going to have to get the slot cover situation straightened out. But, uh... Otherwise, it looks like things are pretty standard in this. I believe this would be a Haswell based, or it's Haswell, sorry, Sandy Bridge based system. Uh, where the 7010 is, a, is an Ivy Bridge, I know that, because it's got a 3770 in it. It's got a PC speaker. A uh, little business audio speaker, I should say. But uh, I gotta dig up some memory for this. That'll probably be the first thing that I do, and we'll see if this thing actually even works at all. Okay, first power up, we're going to use this RAM, which is actually some pretty nice RAM for sitting out here. I don't know why it's out here. I'm sure I'm about to... F and now we figured out why I don't like shooting video with cell phone. Stupid notification comes up, and of course it's right where... The video light off switches, so click that and it goes and does whatever it wants to do. Pain in the butt. Alright. One three. It's definitely a memory problem. I'm surprised that it's not beeping. And it looks like it's probably not going to go any further. So, time to troubleshoot. Okay, here we go. So it works with one module, so I guess maybe this module's dead. So that's a little bit of a problem. Let me see if I can get it to work with another one. Okay. I've now got, uh, they're mismatched. The amount of system memory has changed, which is good. I want to go into setup, however. Which is the standard Dell setup utility. So that's what we've got. Dual interleave, good. AO7. I5-2400. Not terrible. I think it's a little bit better than the uh, 2300 that I've got on some board that's kicking around here somewhere.
course, I have no mouse, which actually would quite have been useful for this BIOS. Okay, having a quick look at this BIOS here. See, there's not much really to report on. So the the uh, MAC address of what I presume is the onboard Ethernet hardware. Let's take a look. This motherboard. There is a single PCI slot there. So that's cool. I'm pretty sure that that CMOS battery is dead, but I guess I'm going to find out about that later. Yeah, well, I mean, I might replace it. Lord knows, I've certainly got some batteries sitting around that could probably use in this. It's not that dirty. So I might just leave it alone. I've got dirtier systems sitting actually in service. So I think I'll probably leave it alone without worrying about firing up the air compressor. I know it's foreign dust, and you don't really want anything to do with that, but... Yeah, I don't really care that much. Uh, I'm thinking about, because I know that at work, we've got some PCI parallel cards. I might go ahead and throw a PCI parallel card in here, because this isn't going to support parallel port on its own. There's a, an extra USB header there. Power switch. It's all kinds of weird stuff. Yeah, this this case would not be usable for another motherboard. You'd have to do a whole lot of modding on this. Things like the switch, because I think the LEDs are in the switch. Yeah, this doesn't really have much else. Your front panel would be down there. That's a weird connector. Of course, that probably actually all goes to this. At the front here. I'm kind of surprised to see a blue LED power power light. I would have expected white because the newer ones are certainly white. I know the 7010's got a white one. I don't think the 7010 has got those indicators either. The Dell diagnostic lights. That was a very good idea. I was kind of disappointed to see that Dell got rid of it. But I think they use the power LED to indicate that kind of stuff now anyway. So... Really, they still have it, it's just not as nice as these indicators were. It will be kind of nice to replace this power supply with something that's got some 80 plus ratings, but I think I'll wait until later to do that. I'm trying to think, how big is the fan in this? Or does it only have a... Oh yeah, no, it's got a rear fan, so it's like a 92 millimeter fan. It almost looks like it's not even running. Then again, same thing with that fan, and I know that it is. CPU fan there. With dust. There's the SMSC, that's probably the low pin count I.O. controller right there. There's a low pin count debug header right there that's not populated. Service mode. Not 100% sure if that would work as a clear CMOS. Or if that's somewhere else on this board. I don't know. But overall, this should be a much nicer, uh, much better setup than what we had. It's not hyper-threaded, so four cores is all you get, which is fine. I don't really need any more than that. In fact, I don't even really need four cores. Legacy boot. This would support UEFI. Probably one of the earliest systems to do UEFI, but I'm sure, like most of them, it's completely broken. And of course, this is also not uh, not set, so I'll have to set that. This here supports an interesting thing here called Image Server. I'm not totally familiar with that, but maybe that's a Dell thing. I don't know. This has an onboard serial port. I was kind of surprised to see that. Also kind of surprised to see that this ha only has a combo microphone line in, as opposed to separate jacks. It looks like there'd be plenty of space for the separate jacks, but, well, whatever. This uh, rear panel actually is quite sparse. There's not much on it. So it's kind of too bad it doesn't have an LPT port on it. So it is an AHCI, of course. Everything's enabled, smart reporting. That usually defaults to off. Some people say it's pretty useless and only warns you when it's too late, but 
you know, can't hurt, right? The USB, you could disable individual, and you could even disable the two, uh, the two sets of rear USB ports individually there, which is kind of interesting. You could enable or disable the PCI slot, which again is kind of interesting. CompuTrace is deactivated like it usually is on these. I don't, I think I've only seen CompuTrace activated once the entire time I've been working on computers. I've never seen it set to disabled. Looks like this would support, or it seems to suggest that it would support a trusted platform module. I don't know where you'd plug that in, because I don't see a header on the board for it, unless it's behind all that junk, which does not look like it is. Something this old would almost certainly need a, uh, a TPM, an external TPM. It wouldn't have what's now called the firmware TPM or Intel PTT. But I don't know where that would be. Maybe it's in the low pin count I.O. controller. And of course, it's got your usual stuff. Multi-core. Kind of interesting that it does that. Set that to power on because this is going to be a server. Here's a bunch of stuff related to image server. Again, probably a Dell-specific thing. Virtualization is on. Not a whole lot in the BIOS events. Um, I think most of this is just from right now. So it looks like somebody was playing, uh, or they must have upgraded the memory every three years, roughly. And then this thing, of course, was left for dead. So goodness only knows when the last time this was used. I think for right now, what I'm actually going to do with this is I'm going to use this to test some hard drives. But uh, then, of course, it's going to go over and uh, be used for a print server, but I'm going to do that tomorrow. I don't want to do that now, because I'm feeling lazy. Okay, quick refresher here. Here's the existing server. This is going to come out. I still have the original hard drive sitting on the table over there. We can go ahead right now and shut this down. Okay, so here's what we got going on here. This one SSD down here simply needs to come out. I think I know how to do this. There we go. If I can get it out. There's a bunch of things that are in the way here. Here we go. It needs to go in here. There it is. Looks a little weird in there. Kind of surprised. It doesn't quite fit in there like a normal hard drive would. The hard drive would come right out to this. But that's the way that this is arranged, so that's the way that it's going to go in. And I can't put it any more forward anyway, so it'll just stay like that. We'll see if the battery that I put in there is actually good. Okay. Ready for the first power-up. Let's see if I can do this here. Okay, it is on, it is running, so that suggests to me that the battery is probably okay. Let's see if it'll boot, yep, there we go, looking good. I don't know what this is right here, already at a desktop, oh yeah. All right, here we go. 16 gigs, i5-2400. Everything looks like it's in good shape. Exactly the way that it was. So nothing's really changed. So that's pretty much it for that. I suppose in the future, I will probably add a parallel port card to this for the PCI, so I could use the parallel port on this and maybe save the USB for a different printer.
And then here's the old machine. Power supply. The new one's probably a little bit more efficient, but I'm not sure. Of course, I put the hard drive that it came with back in there. So, on that note, I would like to thank you for watching, and if you've got any comments, feel free to leave them below.